Oh, hey there, Roger Ratchet here. Um, out here in the 04 Grand Cherokee. And uh, today I was looking over the heater doors. Uh, this vehicle has heat on the driver's side, but not on the passenger side. So I took the glove box door off already as you can see here it just has these uh open up your glove box door i don't know how well i'm gonna be able to get you guys in here to see any of this but when the glove box is in you reach in up here you'll feel these little rubber pieces up in here you just grab a hold of them and slide them down there's two of them you get those out and you'll be able to get your glove box to flip down once you do that you'll see that you have some hooks here this one comes in from the back side and you'll just have to work with a screwdriver to get this pushed in while you're pushing down and just work it until you get that popped out of there and then you end up to where I'm at here now today we're doing something that i haven't done before so we're going to learn together today and i think we'll be able to do it because my heater repair parts that i got i got from jgcparts.com now this kit you get your instructions online and you can get them printed printable so you know you can get them like i just printed this and it shows you where you need to cut and it also has a sheet with precise instructions and i double-sided printed these but this is supposed to be able to fix this problem without having to remove your uh, HVAC system box, which requires the entire dash to come out. So, now we're up to speed. I was just sitting here looking at this, and I don't know how to get you guys in here to see this while I'm working on it. But right there is where we're going to be working. I got to take this box out and then we got to cut up and then like a house roof and then up over here and down here. And then it sections together right there so we don't have to cut that. But I don't know how well you can tell my Goliath hand in this area. It's a lot smaller area than what it looks on the diagram. So, yeah. And uh, by the way, guys, your heater core is right behind this wall. So when you're cutting this, be very careful. You don't want to cut the heater core. If you get into the heater core, you will have to take the whole dash out, remove this entire thing, and replace your heater core. So, just something to be cautious of, and I am going to see uh, if I can get you in a spot to where you can halfway see what I'm doing here. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> uh, using my finger here, <laughs> it's not quite as bright, but, okay, but today I'm going to be using, ooh, got that trapped under the camera leg here, I'm going to be using a Dremel tool with the, um, yeah, whatever you call this deal, it's got the flexible extension on it. 
I'm gonna be using that guy. Try to get in here. Get to this. First thing we gotta do is remove this motor here. And there's only two screws holding it on here. Let's just get those out of the way. And pull it straight out. And you heard the doors flip down. Let's unconnect our wiring harness here. And then we can just set this guy out of the way. So we need to remove this. And let's unplug him. Get him kind of out of the way here somewhere. This, we will have to tuck him up out of the way. We don't want to cut into any of our wires. We'll just have to remember that we shoved them in there so we don't forget to plug them back in. And let's see here, shove that one down there. Well, looks like we should be able to cut here now. Just up along this line, around this ridge and down here. And of course, the uh, eesh, focus, okay. The uh, wheel I'm using is a plastic cutting wheel. So hopefully that helps us cut a little bit. So, pardon the noise, but um, okay, let's get this thing started. that's in the way in a small area and let's hope that I did not hit the heater core I tried not to go very deep but might not have went deep enough and uh, if you're using a power tool guys wear safety glasses this does have some slinging plastic here I need to cut that a little bit better there.
Okay. Now let's see if we got it any better here. Okay, we got that popping out now. And we got something right there holding us. Uh, well, there we go. We got that popped out. And let me see here. Just this one corner right here. Dropping my screwdriver here. Okay. Now let me take this screw out right here on the bottom. And of course the instructions tell you to remove this before you start cutting, but I didn't want this thing to start flopping around as I was cutting it, so I left that in there until I was done cutting. And of course I can't get my bit driver in here so this is a manual screwdriver only screw okay now that screws out let's see well it's moving might not have got this corner up here all the way oh, there we go easy pop loose Okay, there it is. We'll have to uh, clean up the edges a little bit, get all this cut plastic off of it before we start back. Um, let me see. I know you guys can't see in here. Uh, so, let me see if I can show you. Okay, now this little bit of brown bit right here, I'll flip it up for you. That, focus. Come on, focus, focus, focus. Well, it's not going to focus with my hand anyway. With that, what you see is a single door. That is the driver's door, side door. Okay, yeah, well, it's fuzzy, won't focus, but let me zoom you in there a little bit. But yeah, that is the driver's side door, and right behind it back here, you can see a wall, uh, maybe, right here. The seal wall we have to cut that wall out and that wall serves no purpose so once we get that cut out we will throw that away hmm not sure how I want to cut that yet um, oh, it looks like they got a little crazy with the glue in there or glue tape in there didn't they okay um it actually looks like somebody tried to go in from the top side on that before okay so i'm not sure how i want to cut that back there out yet um but yeah there's the well, I don't know. I can see it, but the lighting is just not good. Yeah, okay. That is the heater core I was telling you about was behind this wall. So, I mean, it is right there. So, be very, very careful. And those things aren't cheap either. Okay, I am going to uh, wake the brain up and we'll decide how we want to cut that wall out because the dremel and the angle i would need will not fit back there 
So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Um, let me see if I can get you a little bit of light in here. Uh, okay. Now, as you can see, while you were gone, I got that wall cut out, and now we can see both doors in there. And, um, let me see if I can get you set back down here where you were. And I know you don't want to look at the floor, so aim you upward a little bit. Uh, do do yeah, right in there somewhere. Okay, yeah, right here's where we're at. Okay, now what I did was here's the uh, door that I cut out. And I have a soldering iron. It's like this. A little Chinese or Japanese little thing. It's got your little temperature setting here. And I used a tip. It has like a cutting edge on it. And you can also use this to cut your outside door with, guys. It just, uh, it takes longer and a little bit of patience. Um, it doesn't do a bad job, though. And uh, while I was waiting for that to heat up, I went ahead and cleaned the edges of my outer door. And of course, the inner door, inner wall, we just threw that guy away. Um, I am going to walk over here while you're staring at the dark. And I am going to see if I can get a little bit of light going to help you guys see. I mean, it's not a cloudy day or anything. It's a nice sunny day, but it's just that hole is so rough to be able to get light into for you to see. Um, well, I'm trying, fellas. Okay, well, I know it ain't great, but it's got to be better than what it was, right? Okay, so, let me, uh, let me see here, I believe, consult our directions here. Uh, remove the glove box. We've already done that. Remove the screws. Yeah. Get the wires out of the cutting way. Yeah. Cut outside wall. Cut the inside wall. Um, remove broken blend doors and discard. Um, mm -hmm. uh -huh. I guess, I think, does this just pull out of there, I wonder? I got it. Okay. Got to give it a good tug. Okay. Now we got to uh, remove this guy. Ooh, he's nasty. Okay. Yeah, nasty, nasty, nasty. And now we need to move. Remove, remove, remove. Gots to remove. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, zoom in past that. See if you can see in there. No, it's not working. Okay. Uh. Do do. -doo. Um. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. There's where we just, that hole right there is where we just pulled that white piece out. Give it a good tug. 
and in there is the shaft to our passenger side blend door we got to pull that out so this is uh, about the roughest time I've ever had not quite the roughest time but about the roughest time I've had trying to get me and the camera in such a small little hole and this not having any light for me in there Eesh. okay I gotta run back and get me a different tool because that is not working back in that hole and I guess I'm just gonna have to take this out little piece by little piece I'm glad I have these long handled pliers. It'd be a little rough without them. And let me see what I can do here. Can I pry that? Well. Try that past that or not. screwdriver here and see if he'll go in there there we go and that little piece of black plastic flop off there I don't know where he went Okay, here's our other blend door from the back. Okay, yes, that must stay. So let's take our back blend door and put it in. And you know what, that thing it does not want to turn very well. So I'm going to get a little bit of oil and spray in there on that. Well, it's not exactly the oil I would want to use on it. But it's the first oil I seen when I walked in there. So we're going to hit it a little bit of WD-40. And then we're going to take my pliers and oh yeah, that made an immediate difference. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's spray a little bit more in there because he likes it. He likes the lube on the shaft. Okay. Lubing the shaft and turning the shaft and twisting the shaft. Okay. Now, let's get our blend door in there on that. this and put him on there now we'll use our blend door to turn it Ooh. turns nice a little squeaky but turns nice okay 
Now, let's um, <laughs> this, the end of this one, uh, get you to where you can see it. Okay, this one with the flat two sides on it and this little thingy bobby here comes off and we got like a little, you know, like a little corn holder tip in, okay. We'll pull that off so we can get this blend door in here. And we just shove that end into the other blend door shaft. And we line that up there. And then we'll put our little corn holder spikes in there if I can get them lined up. And maybe I can get them lined up. You know, my youngest daughter told me I should never drive without my glasses. Oh. Uh, well, I didn't have my glasses on driving. I just didn't see me doing anything wrong. So <laughs> I guess it's uh, all up to what you can't see, right? Okay. Now, I don't have me a small typey type back here, so. And, um, did I put that on right? Because that lever, or should I have flipped that around? Um, let me see, that went on like that, right? So. Because that is kind of, well, I guess it's supposed to go in between that, I guess. But I'm thinking it probably shouldn't have to hit it, though. Which it is hitting it. Hmm. Okay, so I need to pull that off and figure out what to do with this. I'm thinking we don't need that in there if that'll come out. And it won't come out. Nope. Um, hmm. wonder if we can bend it. Bend it, bend it, just slightly, because that little side pin is dragging the plastic right there. That's what it is, and it's causing some interference. There we go. So we got her bent. Okay. Now, just line him back up on there, shove him back in. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got him to go in a lot further, too. There we go. So there was our problem. And let me bend it up just a little tiny bit more. Or, well, I don't know if I could break that off here. Well, actually, now I got it turning in there, and out he comes. So he's out, he's out of the way. And get this back in there oh yeah yeah looks good to me okay now what they say is our whew, got a bunch of nasty off of the old blend doors all over it but what they say they want us to do <coughs> is take our little cover and put it back on here and there we go and we are going to I've got all kinds of parts down here on top of my tools now um, 
I'm going to get my little screw that goes down here on the bottom. We're going to put him back in. And I know you guys can't see the screw that I'm turning, but I'm barely seeing it myself, fellas. But when you're doing this, you'll be able to see it. It just right on the bottom of this cover. Okay, we got that on there. And right there, at the end of my finger right there, that's that little screw just right at the bottom of that little thing that we cut out there. And, um, whew. get you guys situated here again, maybe. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, fellas. I don't know. Just don't know, don't know, don't know. Okay, well, eh, yeah, somewhat, maybe, I don't know. Okay. Um, in this kit, guys, I'm gonna give you some duct vent tape. And what that's for is all around here, where we did our cut, we are going to just seal that up with our tape. Now I'm going to, because uh, I got it popped in here on the wrong side of this plastic here, I'm gonna see if I can pop it back over. Which while I was off camera, I cleaned up my edges and just used my little pocket knife to clean it up, just knocking that hot burnt plastic off of it. Okay, yeah, there we go, that looks right, right-ish, and what we're going to do with our tape here, so I'm just going to hold it here, and looks like cut it there. And then we'll peel off our sticky back, maybe. Yeah, this stuff is never easy to get a hold of. And then, you know, it's silver too on the back side. But you'll tell what side is what, because one side will be sticky and the other side won't. <laughs> okay. Mm, yeah, I know. Leave the joking to the professionals. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, and this stuff, guys, it's, it's sticky as crap. I mean, I did not take this and wash it, clean it in any way. I just wiped, wiped it off with the heavy, you know, heavy stuff off of it. That's all I did. And this stuff here, I'm telling you, they didn't cheap out when they sent, send this stuff here with you. Because I'm telling you, you this this stuff, it will not come off there. And once you put it on there, it's on there to stay. And we're going to cut this one back right there. And uh, like I said, guys, the, the, this company that, that I ordered this from, and I will put put the link in the description down below they did not skimp on this stuff that they send you because when I'm done you will see and as you can see I'm cutting this stuff longer than the cuts that I made and when I'm done you will see See here, I got enough to go up over top of that and fold it around. But when I'm done, you'll see I'll have tape left. I am not going to use 
all this tape on this. They give you enough to where if you mess up a little bit, it's not going to hurt anything because you've got more than enough tape to fix it. And, and this, this tape, it's if you cut the line just where they show you to cut it, and this tape is wide enough to where you don't have to go through all of that. You, I mean, you just go straight across that. I mean, you don't have to follow every line exactly. But yeah, when you open this kit up, guys, you're going to look at that tape and you're going to think, oh boy, is there enough there? But when you get under here and see no more than what there is that you got to tape, you're like, oh boy. They were very generous with the tape. And I'm not sponsored by these guys at all, guys. I get no money from any part or product that I use in my videos. This is all of everything that I have discovered on my own, bought it with my own money, no sponsorships. Now, Look at there. Boy, ain't that pretty. Got that all taped up. This taped up across here and down there. And you don't have to tape this down here, guys. That's a natural seam. That's uh, meant to stay just the way it is, right there. And, like I said, I'd show you. Wait a minute, let me get my camera fixed here boy guys be glad you don't have to deal with this stuff eh, okay but as you can see here this is the tape that i've got left and i mean we're talking probably eight inches of tape left here i mean it's probably almost half of what they gave us in the kit Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to plug this in and we are going to slide him back on his little holder here. And then bring this up here and plug him in. And then we are going to do this bolt on like this. So we need to turn this in some way, shape, or fashion to match that. We've got two flat sides in the motor and two flat sides on the shaft. So we've got to match those to get it slided on there. And don't worry guys, it'll, when you turn the key on, it will reset itself and relearn the position that it needs to be in. So, let's start this. And then we'll come over here and start this one. And this is plastic guys and you know, lightly, very lightly. We don't want to break our plastic. Okay, now, um, let me look over and make sure that I did not forget to put any parts in here. Okay, it looks like we got a wall, the inner wall that we're discarding, and we've got two blend doors that we are also discarding, and a piece of tape, which we will hang on to that. That's some good stuff there. 
never know where we might need to use that later or just want to use it and uh, let me see here oh let me uh, get a key <laughs> yeah we got a key put that in the switch and I am going to train you on this hopefully I can hold this still turn the key on and it did not turn for us so Changing the heat settings didn't do anything, so let's turn the key off. And that also didn't do anything. So why are we not turning here? Let's try to turn that back on. We'll try to start it. Yeah, we'll start it. And still nothing. Okay. Well. Let me take that back off of there. See if I can get you guys to where you can see it here. I'll take this back off of here. It shouldn't have mattered it being on or off. But this should have calibrated itself. That should be in an upward position. Nope. Downward position, maybe? Well, let's try that again. something there right or wrong it did something okay let's shut it back off and there we go Uh, okay. It was turning in a way to where it should have been a 
up. But we cannot. Hook that in like that. It's not turning again. Okay. Well, I'm gonna figure this out and I'll be back. All right, so we're back. And the trick is, you have to turn your ignition on let the computer get power for a minute and then shut your ignition off and leave your ignition turned off for about two minutes and that will trigger the uh, recalibration cycle and right here I will turn the temperature down and we will watch it turn you can see it turn there and I'll turn the temperature back up and you can see it turn back the other way so we are calibrated and our uh, door is put back together and you can't feel it but yeah we have heat over here now and all we have to do is put our glove box, glove box door back on so let me See if I can zoom you out a little bit here. I don't know how that got zoomed in like that, but okay. Whew. All right, so there it is, the fix to our uh, no heat on the passenger side. So, with that said, until next time, I'm Roger Ratchet, and thank you for watching. <laughs>